In many systems, some hardware support is provided to implement the critical section uh, solutions. In all of these solutions, you will always have some locking concept named one way or the other uh, to protect the critical sections. In the case of uh, uniprocessor systems, where you have one processor and one core, you can simply disable interrupts. So there will be no context switches because the timer interrupt is also uh, disabled. So uh, the operating system, the scheduler, cannot do a context switch. Uh, so there will be no preemption. Uh, this is typically very inefficient if you consider multiprocessor systems because you will have to deal with uh, interrupt enabling and disabling for all of the uh, processors and also uh, it will not be scalable most of the processes will have to uh, sit idle so uh, instead of that in modern systems we have some atomic instructions some specific instructions are allowed to be atomic which means when that instruction starts you cannot stop it. You cannot uh, do a, any context switch until that uh, operation, that instruction is completed. So atomic, is, uh, atomic instruction is an instruction which is not interruptible. Examples of this would be, for example, uh, testing some memory word. That means in the memory, uh, checking if some word has uh, true or false or zero or one whatever if it has some specific value or not so for comparison or also uh, for the same word you should of course be able to set it to zero or one or whatever value in an atomic manner or another option is if you have two such words in an atomic manner do the swap okay remember that the swap operation cannot be normally done in one instruction, but uh, this specific type of swap is done in an atomic manner. So, if you have such mechanisms for uh, putting locks and releasing them, uh, then you sh your program turns into uh, it's small code to acquire the lock. If you can acquire the lock, you can go into the critical section, and when you're done with the critical section, you should release the lock. After you release the lock, you have the remainder of your code, which could be done uh, executed in a concurrent manner. Whenever you need to go into a critical section, again, acquire lock, do the critical section, release the lock. So one such implementation uh, could be, for example, the test and set function. We're assuming that we have a mechanism to execute this function in an atomic manner. That means when you do this function call, there will be no context switches. It's a very simple function. It takes a, a variable argument, uh, passed by a reference argument, which is a Boolean value. It stores this value in a random variable and sets it to true. That's where the set in the name comes from. So you make the parameter true and also return its previous value. Okay, so if previously it was false, it will be returning false, but it will convert it to true. If it was true, it's still made true, so the value doesn't change. It remains as true, but it returns true in that case. And all this is done, as I said, in an atomic manner. Then, if we are given such an atomic function, we can work as follows. Before entering the critical section, we have a while loop that tests and sets the lock, which is initially false. Okay, so if the lock, initially the lock is not locked, it's false. Okay, so if so, you will find it, uh, this function will return false and also lock it. Okay but you're the first one to do it, so you can enter the critical section. Now, if some other process runs a similar code and calls test and set lock, it will find it to be true because you have set it to true, okay? 
So that other process will just get blocked here in this while loop. Okay. Meanwhile, hopefully you will be done with your critical section. So when you set your when you set the lock to false, that uh, other process that's waiting for the lock to be released, at some point, this function call for that process will return false, so that process can proceed, but also it will immediately set it back to uh, true. So that means initially the lock was unlocked, so you acquired it, but the moment you acquired it, you also set it to uh, true, so that means it is locked. Anyone who wants to enter its critical section will get blocked because the lock is true. Note that there could be multiple processes that are waiting for the lock to be released. Only when you're done with your critical section, you will release the lock, but one and only one of them, of those that are waiting for the lock to be released, will get a return value of false. All others will not be able to enter the function yet because remember the function is atomic. So whoever entered the function will get a return value of false, but also the lock will be converted back to true. So other waiting processes still will see it as true. So they will remain in that loop there. So this is how this would proceed. Another option is just similar to test and set function. This time we have compare and swap function, which uh, takes three parameters this time. The first one is a pass by reference parameter, the value. The second one is the uh, another integer variable, but it's a, a pass by value. And similarly, the new value. So what it does is it will take the original value of this first parameter into some temporary variable and then check if the value of that variable is equal to the expected value or not. If it is equal to the expected value, the value of the first variable will be updated with the third one and in any under any condition this function will return the original value of the first parameter. And again, we're assuming that this function is given to us as an atomic function. So using this, uh, we can uh, implement a solution as follows. Luck this time is initialized to zero rather than false. By the way, you can do it with true and false if you wish. Same thing. It's just because uh, this is defined as an integer. So if you want to uh, go into your critical section, you should call the compare and swap function for the luck. You expect it to be false, unlocked. And if so, you should make it locked. So initially it was zero. So the first process that wants to go into the critical section will compare the lock against zero, which is true. Therefore, it will be set to one. So that process will be able to enter its critical section because compare and lock returns, remember, zero, the original value. And we are checking if it's equal to zero or not. Uh, so it will enter, uh, it will do its critical section and uh, exit, uh, when, when it exits, it will set lock to zero. Okay, this way it, it will do something very similar to what we did in the previous uh, case. Again, assuming that this compare and swap function is an atomic function. These algorithms are good in the sense that they provide mutual exclusion, but they fail to satisfy the bounded baiting requirement. What I mean by that is, 
It could be that process P1 is waiting for process P0 to complete its critical section. By the time uh, process P0 uh, completes its critical section, say another process P2 also wants to go into the critical section. When P0 completes its critical section, although P1 had been waiting for a long time, it is possible that just by chance, uh, due to this test and set uh, method uh, or compare and wait, you could be, uh, process P2 could get the luck. Okay, so P1 would still wait. But while P2 is in its critical section, another process P3 could start waiting. And when it is, uh, when it has completed, when P2 has completed its critical section, again, the other process, P3, uh, could get out of the test and set uh, function and again P1 could wait. So there is no way to guarantee that P1 will proceed. P1 might be very unlucky and it could be that always others get the chance to go into the critical section and P1 could wait for a very long time. So we need a better and more fair solution to this. And this could be easily implemented using the test and set instruction. In uh, the 10th edition of the uh, textbook, you can find an implementation, a similar implementation using compare and swap function. It's the same thing, uh, just, uh, you know, instead of using true here, you make it one, instead of using test and uh, set, you use compare and swap from here. It's the same idea. So I will go with the explanation over test and set. So the idea is actually as follows. Okay, you should use test and set to ensure mutual exclusion. But while releasing the lock, don't just simply release the lock so that uh, the uh, waiting processes could race and some unlucky guy, unlucky uh, process would always lose its race, instead of that, just go in turns and leave the luck to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, go in this manner. So how can we do that? We can do it by means of a little bit more complexity and an additional array, Boolean array. So if we have n tasks that are uh, somehow related, we would need an additional boolean array named waiting, which was initialized to all false, and also another variable, again boolean, uh, st. So, if you want to go into your critical section, you make your own entity in that array. So, you remember the process pi, so you make the waiting, uh, the ith element of waiting array equal to true because you are waiting to enter into the critical section. You also set key to true and while you are waiting and key is true, just run the test and set lock. Test and set on lock. Okay? So remember test and set returns the current value of lock and also sets the lock. Okay? If the lock was not set at all, you would just uh, set it to uh, true, but key would return false. Therefore, you would get out of the loop and enter your critical section. But if someone was already in the critical section, therefore the lock was set to true, test and set would return true. Therefore, this condition you're waiting and key is true, so this is still true, so you will just get blocked here, waiting for the uh, lock to be released. Okay? So assume that there are several processes that are waiting this way, and let's look at the one who gets the lock. Whoever gets the lock is not waiting anymore, so it will make its own uh, waiting value false, Remember, it's just modifying its own element in waiting array. 
to false and it enters its critical section in this instead of this comment it does whatever needs to be done in the critical section when it is done with its critical section it tries to find the first actually the next process in the waiting list that comes after itself uh, that has said waiting to truth in other words it is waiting okay so you first make j equal to the next element the id of the next process in this list but since we're talking about circular list we say j becomes i plus one modulo n okay so if now if you look at this condition we're going to as you can see inside the loop we're incrementing j by one so as long as j has j is not i now remember j started from i plus one so it's not i initially we know that but since it's being incremented in every iteration of the loop it is possible that j will loop from the end from n minus one and get back to i under which condition in case no one else is waiting if you were the last one waiting for this uh, critical section for this lock only in that condition j would become i otherwise if there is someone other than you who is waiting j will eventually be the index of that process since that process is waiting value is true negation of that would be false so this condition would fail so you wouldn't be incrementing j anymore and you exit so when you come to this if statement you would come to this if statement only under two conditions either there is no one else waiting which is a then case or there is something someone waiting in that case j is the index of that process now if if there's no one else who is waiting you can just safely release lock if there is someone waiting pay attention we're not releasing lock you're just setting that other uh, processes waiting value to false not yours pay attention this is the j of waiting you set it to false that process remember was stuck here so independent of the value of key which is the return value of test and set when you make that process's waiting value false this would be false so the process get breaks this loop and continues makes its waiting state false it I have already made it false, so it doesn't matter. And it enters this critical section. So one thing you should pay attention to here is when you enter critical so section or when you exit the critical section immediately, you don't set luck to false. You set it to false only if you were the only one who was waiting. The key idea here is the following. If you were to make the value of uh, luck equal to false here after the critical section has ended again all the processes that were waiting would be racing for the value of luck so we couldn't guarantee that the next uh, process who is waiting is able to get the luck it could be possible that someone who was lucky could be getting the luck before the unlucky guys again but in our solution you always you keep the luck as true that means keep it locked but give the opportunity to someone else who can enter not because the luck is, is released but because this condition has been broken this way we guarantee that we don't have the bounded waiting problem so the bounded waiting requirement has been met